Here is a weird idea. What about if I 3D scan something which is already digital 3D model? Is it possible to 3D scan something out from the PlayStation games? Hello boys and girls, it's Oli here again and this time I wanted to take a look is it possible to capture something which is already in the digital 3D4. I originally got this idea from Martin Niebel, a talented 3D artist from Denmark who does amazing things with the Dreams game engine. Dreams is a game engine which is specially designed for a PlayStation. A game company called Media Molecule has created this unique platform where you can create wonderful environments and 3D models inside a game console. But it all happens in a closed environment and it is not possible to export anything but images and videos out from dreams. All 3D creations remain inside the game and you are not able to use them anywhere else. Before this neat trick, in his video Martin presents a simple concept where the game environments can be scanned out of the locked PlayStation world and translated into a 3D Nerf model. So I also wanted to try the same technique for a couple of popular PlayStation games. In many current games, the game developers have built a special photo mode into the game menu. For example, in this Spider-Man game, you can stop playing and use the photo mode to capture the game moment. And this is exactly the method with which we are now going to 3D scan the game character out of the game. First, we just need to double-click the share button on the PlayStation controller to start the video recording. Then we just capture the rotations around the game character just like we would do in a real-world photogrammetry scan. We need to rotate the virtual camera very slowly and record the subject from three different angles. One round from the top then center, and finally from lower angle. Photo mode settings are slightly different in different games, but mostly they work on the same principles. Compared to 3D scanning in the real world, it is very easy to make smooth and precise camera movements around an object in the game world. Although it does require sensitive fingers and the grip of a skilled player to make the virtual camera move slowly enough. In addition to the Spider-Man game, I also tried to record some scans in the legendary The Last of Us game. There, in the extra materials of the game, it is possible to view the trophy characters that can be seen when you have complete enough points in the game. These trophy figures from the game are especially placed on such stands and you can rotate them and look at them very closely. So they are particularly good material for this scanning experiment. After the scans, it's time to take the recorded videos out of the PlayStation and transfer them to the desktop computer. I used a basic USB memory stick to copy the video files. For the production of the 3D models, we are going to use three different services and see which one handles these game scans best. Luma AI and 3D Presso are services that are based on NERF technology and are able to produce 3D models directly from video files. Polycam, on the other hand, is a photogrammetry program and for that the video must be dismantled in image sequence. And now, right after copying the files, I got worried when I noticed that the video files imported from the PlayStations are only at low 720p resolution. I have an earlier model of PlayStation 4 and it seems that it can only record 720p video captures. Newer PS4 Pro 
and PS5 models are capable of recording full HD, which would have been a bit better 1080p resolution for this case. So this experiment became interesting right away. As a general rule in 3D scanning, it can be considered that the higher the resolution of the source material is, the better accuracy of the textures on the 3D model will be. So, just an experiment I wanted to test what would happen if I change one of these videos to higher 4K resolution using Video AI Upscaling tool from Tobas Labs. This neat software can generate the video quality much better and use the AI calculations to convert the low-res videos to high-res. But will this procedure make 3D models any better? Let's find out. Let's start with the Luma AI. I first uploaded the original low-res 720p video to Luma and waited what kind of a nerf model it can process out of it. And while the Luma was doing its task, I uploaded the 4K version to make a comparison. I was surprised when I noticed that the Luma was able to calculate surprisingly good version of the lower resolution source material. Although the model against the dark background wasn't certainly not the easiest task to render into a 3D model, I was even more surprised when I saw what kind of a model it made from the 4K version. The higher 4K version turned out to be worse than the model calculated from the original 720p material. So the result was the complete opposite of what I expected. If this is true, can it be assumed that for nerf modeling the resolution is not a decisive factor when accurate models are created? But after everything I had to remember that I was looking at these models in a web browser and Luma.ai itself has now updated this description in the browser which says that viewing the model in 3D mode is only an approximate representation of NERF which is used to show a preview in real time on your device. When you click render, the underlying NERF model will be used to render a higher quality video. So basically, we shouldn't rely on how we see the model in the web browser. And in that sense, the original rule holds true. When looking at the final NERF renderings, it is noticeable that the 4K version is a bit better as we originally expected it would be. But now let's check out how the other scans performed in other services. In 3D Presso I had problems with the Last of Us model. For some reason it didn't know how to build anything sensible out of it. And the whole thing mostly looked like a contemporary art. But the second video of the Spider-Man game turned out to be a significantly better creation. 3D Presso managed to create excellent replica of this Spider-Man figure. And we have to remember that I used the low-res video as the material in here. The textures and details that 3D Presso was able to build are amazingly accurate. Only some minor issues can be found in the fingers, but all in all this is a very good 3D model considered how it was built out from the game. The reason why this model turned out to be so well and then why the Last of Us model did not succeed at all can be due to the fact that Spider-Man had a good background where the 3D Presso algorithm was better able to calculate the 3D shapes out of it. While in this Last of Us model the background was dark and limited. At least I think that would be the reason. Let's move on and look at the Polycam application next. But before that we need to create those image sequences out from the video file so that we can then generate the model in Polycam. And since the video has so many frames per second 
we don't need quite as many frames for the photogrammetry method. So we need to speed up the video and for this function I use After Effects. In here I just manipulate time and enable the time remapping feature. For Polycam we can only upload maximum 1000 pictures. So I drag this endpoint of the video to frame 800 and trim the timeline to same duration. After that we just render out this clip as a JPEG image sequence. And now in the Polycam we can upload all these images to Polycam server and wait what kind of a Spider-Man it can build from this. Since this is a basic photogrammetry program, resolution is very important to achieve a good 3D model in here. And since a low resolution video image was used as the source material, Polycam is not able to build accurate textures. Although the shape of the character is somewhat good, the textures remain of poor quality. But the situation will improve as soon as we use more detailed images. In this Joel and Ellie model, I used upscaled 4K images and the resolution is already significantly better and the model seems reasonable. But in the end, I would say that Polycam is perhaps the wrong application for this kind of a translation based on video material. It works much better when the pictures are taken with the real-world camera. Well, this is where these 3D modeling possibilities were, and it's time to draw some kind of a conclusion. Is there any point in trying to scan game characters from PlayStation games with these AI tools? Probably not, at least the game characters directly. I'm sure that you can find much more detailed and ready-made game characters all around the internet, no matter what use you want to use them for. But especially if you have created something of your own with PlayStation games that focus on constructions like Minecraft or Dreams, then this method could be the only way to export environments out of the game console. And I think that it was fun and interesting experiment anyway. I at least learned a lot about 3D modeling technologies during this process. And now I am much more experienced on how these AI services works and what possibilities they can offer in the end. Especially nerf modeling is very interesting and it is good to follow how this technology will develop by using even material from the games if there is nothing else to scan. I hope you had fun and enjoyed this video. If you are interested in these programs, check out my previous videos as well. There is much more information on this topic. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Goodbye.